Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since I've been here on YouTube, but I'm super stoked to be back. Today, I actually have a really exciting one for you. For those of you who live in Canada, you know we had an absolutely wild winter this past season. Uh, I, I, the temperatures were freezing. That was probably more snow than I've seen in years. But with that, it also raised a lot of awesome opportunities to go take some banger street shots inside the city. Uh, Toronto just tends to have this crazy atmosphere when it's snowing. Everything's kind of wet. The reflections are just bangers and I really like shooting in that weather. One of my favorites, although it's just, you know, cold and your hands freeze. So make sure you got gloves if you're, if you're doing it. But with that said, I wanted to actually share with you guys the preset that I use to edit these photos. So the preset itself is called Dream State. Now the purpose of this preset was kind of to create a whimsical kind of vibe that really emphasizes that dreamy surrealism that the city tends to bring on these moody kind of days. What we're gonna be doing is just kind of applying this preset and I'm gonna be going through the settings inside Lightroom and kind of explaining my thought process between each setting. And if you can actually stay till the very end of the video, then I will show you how you can download this preset for yourself. But yeah, you gotta wait till the end of the video. No cheating. <laughs> I do recommend that you actually kind of sit through this because we're gonna be learning a lot about Lightroom and just kind of the capabilities of the software while building this preset. So without further ado, we're gonna just hop right into Lightroom here. Now I've kind of got three photos already. These are completely unedited raw photos. Um, and we'll just start maybe with this car here. Now, what we're also gonna be doing is just bringing this quickly into Photoshop after, and um, inside Photoshop, we're gonna be applying a cool kind of bloom effect that I found on uh, YouTube. Now, I'll actually link the full tutorial to this bloom effect in the description, so you can check that out. Um, I think his name's Lucan. He's got a really good YouTuber. He's got some awesome tutorials, and uh, you can learn a lot from him as well. But I think the effect just really emphasizes this preset uh, quite a bit, so that's why I've been using it. So without further ado, I know I've said that already, we're gonna hop into Lightroom here and we're just gonna start with a super quick crop uh, just to kind of straighten this photo out. And now with this new Instagram format, I really don't know if I like this, but we're gonna try cropping this for the first time as uh, 16 by nine, maybe something like that. And we're just going to be coming over here to our Cyber City presets. We're gonna be hitting Dream State. So this is my favorite one here, the one with grain. I don't tend to use the one without grain. Personally, I really enjoy that grain look, even on kind of like feature, every sort of imagery. I don't know that kind of that filmic look just looks, it's just so eye catching, you know? But anyways, we're gonna get into it. Obviously this is too dark, so we're gonna have to make some adjustments with every preset that you have inside Lightroom. You're always gonna have to make a few adjustments depending on uh, the photo itself. So we'll just grab the exposure, bring that up so we can actually see the car looks good and maybe we'll just bring the ha uh, the shadows uh the shadows are pretty good there's not a whole lot of shadow detail there and we can kind of just play around with the highlights and the exposure something around there looks good to me so what we're going to be doing is kind of just going through my thought process here as to why i selected all of these values and um, we're going to see how in depth i can actually go in this so let's get started now first with our basic adjustments we always i kind of tend to start with sort of a colder temperature because I tend to actually add in more of the warmth inside the uh, color, the new color grading feature inside Lightroom. And I like to start things off cold and kind of add in that warmth as we go through the edit. So that's what we're gonna be doing first. Got uh, very minor tint. Uh, sometimes I even just use this eyedropper here and click on a white part in the scene and let Lightroom auto balance it. It does a great job, uh, but you will have to kind of just play with these to get that right kind of look that you're going for. So next we have our exposure and contrast. Uh, we're just gonna bring that exposure up so we can at least see what's going on in the image. Uh, for something maybe like this, if we just apply it, uh, it kinda has the same thing. We just have to bring that exposure up ever so slightly. Um, but that's kinda like the main thing you'll have to adjust. Now as we come down here, we've got our highlights. So the highlights I kept when applying the preset, they were relatively boosted. The reason for this is because I do want the highlights to sort of blow out ever so slightly because we are going to dial that down inside our tone curve. So our shadows, this one here, very flexible slider. You can kind of bring this up and down just to uh, gauge the amount of detail you want in your shadows that are showing. And of course, you've got lots of flexibility with this. There's really no right or wrong answer. If you want your, your image to be more crushed in the blacks, 
go for it, drag that slider down. If you want those shadows to be a little more prominent, then bring them back up. We've got whites, slightly boosted whites, just because you know it just adds a little bit to that bloom. Blacks, slightly crushed. Again, I like to crush the blacks and just bring a little more darkness into areas like this, because we're of course gonna be lifting that ever so slightly inside the tone curve. All right, so next we have our presence. So texture, um, I don't tend to touch this too much. Sometimes I like to bring this up if I wanna bring out a little bit more detail, but I do like how this kind of has that grainy look and it's got that snow kind of falling at the same time. It's all wet and I do enjoy the amount of texture. You can of course boost it. You can kind of see what it does here. It sort of adds a sharpness without a sharpness, if that makes sense. So clarity, I of course bring clarity down just a little bit. Clarity is something that I tend to bring down on almost all of my images. This just softens it up a little bit, and I do like that. Um, that softer look kind of brings it further into that fairy tale, sort of whimsical, kind of bloomy um, style that we're going for. Vibrant saturation, I do not touch that. Our tone curve. So this is where I said that I like to lift my black. So this is something that is very um, codependent on the type of edit you're trying to go for but sometimes I do tend to just grab this and lift it up ever so slightly just to cut these blacks in here so there's no permanent black in the scene. And vice versa, I like to do the same with the top here and just bring the whites down ever so slightly like this and just kind of cut those whites. So there's not, so basically what this is doing is saying there will be no pure white and no pure black inside our scene. We are basically clipping those values. Um, nothing going on in the uh, the uh, red, green, and blue of the tone curve. Everything's kind of done here in the basic one. Just a simple S curve. You really don't need much else with most edits. Um, you can, of course, go super in depth at this, but we are not doing that for this kind of edit. Let's move on here to our HSL and color sliders. What we're gonna do is just hit all so you can kind of get an overall feel. We're gonna start with hue, absolutely nothing. Everything in this scene is uh, basically designed for this style of shooting. So I wouldn't just go and slap this preset on say like a sunset shot. It probably won't look that good, but on your rainy, moody or rainy, moody, rainy or snowy photos, that's kind of the primary effect. And I just leave these stationary here to really bring out the, just let the grays and the natural colors of the scene kind of pop as opposed to alter. Next, we've got our saturation. So this is where we've made quite a few uh, changes. We're gonna obviously desaturate our blues and whatnot. I'm not really a fan of this unless I'm pushing these oranges more, a little bit more. I guess you wanna push the blues more teal. Unless I was going for that teal and orange purposeful look, I tend to keep my blues relatively muted because the rule of thumb, at least for me, when coloring is stick to two colors, two colors and three max if there's a few more, like multiple colors in the scene. You don't wanna have, like, usually I find more than three colors and things tend to, tend to kind of look a little busy um, and your eyes kind of like floating around to all the colors, unless it's intentional, but we're going for that moody, uh, yeah, almost, almost. We're going for that moody street photo here. So we're gonna try and keep that relatively muted and I wanna keep our warmths, our warm colors still kind of popping and vibrant. Now, uh, purple magenta, I tend to just bring these down ever so slightly. It tends to help with a little bit of chromatic aberration if you're getting any around here. This scene here tends to, doesn't look like there's any chromatic aberration, but you can desaturate the purples and magentas to kind of bring that down. I do notice you get that when, uh, often when taking photos of like really bright headlights or anything that contrasts white on black with like a sharp line. Uh, the sensors just seem to not be good enough quite yet to uh, perfectly distinguish between the two. So next we've got luminance. So luminance, uh, relatively straightforward, just kind of bringing down the, the um, luminance on the blues. Now you'll notice the blues are pretty heavy, kind of like tied into the whites here. Obviously with the snowy days, you tend to get these kind of deeper blue tones that come into the shadows. So I just like to bring those down a little bit with the luminance and it allows us to also, um, since we've got our highlights boosted, bringing down those blues kind of just dials them back ever so slightly. So not too much going on there. Again, you can kind of mess with these if you want. 
Um, next, so this is where a lot of things are happening inside our color grading. So this is where we're getting those really nice tones in the shadows here. Um, we're bringing in some more of the color as opposed to this, which kind of looks dull and boring. This just feels like it has a little bit more of that life to it. Now, if I apply this preset to this one as well, we'll just come back up here, bring up this ever so slightly. And I think I actually cropped this out. We're going to do that super quickly. Crop that out. We'll keep it right about here, maybe. And you've got another photo. I'll probably just remove that in Photoshop, but we've got another photo. So something like this, you've got your highlights kind of boosted. Um, what was I actually getting at here? You've got your color grading. You can see quite a big difference. It's really bringing in those nice tones that I like in the shadows. So let's break down what we did here in the color grading panel. First, we've got our um, do -do shadows. This is one that I start with first. I know you can kind of start up here if you want, but I tend to start with the shadows and move them ever so slightly towards the blues. Um, here's the uh, exact H236 uh, if you want that exact code. And we got our highlights. Now, sometimes uh, people would tend to move them towards the oranges. These are almost towards those yellowy green kind of colors here. So they're slightly pulled up into the right. Um, and midtones kept at nothing. Now this preset was actually created before uh, Lightroom even allowed this midtones to be a thing back when this was just called split toning. So there's no data inside this midtones and personally I don't change it, I just leave it as is. And of course you can uh, use this view if you want them bigger but there is nothing else going on inside the color grading. Very simple, um, I think this one is, yes it is, nope, zero. All right, it looked, it looked to me like this slider might have been slightly turned to the left here, but it's actually on zero. This value here represents it. So with that said, we're going to go past color grading. That's pretty much it. We've got our simple details here, our sharpening. Now, this is just basic Lightroom stuff. Uh, we'll scroll down. Nothing too crazy. If you want to add a vignette, you can. Our grain, here's some grain settings. If you would like to copy the exact amount of grain that I use. Uh, looks really nice, honestly, on these photos. Now this one here could use a little bit of straightening. Boom. Okay, cool. I know it's not perfect. I would probably spend a little more time on it, but for the sake of this video, we're going to cut that there. And we'll go all the way to the bottom. So this is going to be the last setting here that we're going to cover, and that is the calibration tool. So this is the one tool why I use, the one reason why I use Lightroom Classic over the regular Lightroom. Um, it gives you this ability to use the split toning options here. So shadows, drag it ever so slightly to the green. We'll actually just show you kind of off and on. A really, really big difference. Off just looks, I don't even know what's going on here. We got some purpley tones coming in here, some purples in the shadows, mixing with an ugly blue. With the calibration, it just really dials in those colors. So these are the settings that we use here. A little bit of a red, green, a red, green, blue split. What I tend to do is kind of bring the reds to the right, the blues to the left, and I use the greens to mainly balance out those skin tones. So you can see kind of, I think if this will be a good, yeah. So I hope you guys can see it, but the green is really balancing out his skin tones there. Um, if you bring it further to the left here, he kind of appears more almost like sick with the greens and to the right, he's kind of more red. So I find a nice neutral balance and that's where we're gonna stick it. So with that said, guys, that is pretty much it for this Dream State um, preset. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, what we're going to be doing, if you're still sticking around, is we're going to just be bringing in a Photoshop. I'm going to show you a super quick effect here. So right click on our photo, edit in Photoshop, photo here. Now, what we're going to do is just unlock our layer, control J to duplicate it. Our top layer here, we're going to come over to image, apply image. Uh, there we go. Photoshop is having a little heart attack. Everything default. Um, so you copy down these settings. If you change them, then they won't be default. But make sure these are your settings. Hit OK. And we're going to come up to normal and set this blending mode to screen. And of course, you will notice there is not much of a difference except some uh, little bit of brightening. But the final step, we're going to right click, convert to smart object. This will allow us to apply a filter and edit it later on. Come up here to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And you can see just by dialing in this radius here, the strength of bloom that you're going to be applying. So this literally looks already kind of like the moment uh, diffuse filter that you guys can buy. So if you just hit okay, 
and you've already got your bloom and that would be your final image. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's pretty much it for what we've got today. If you wanna download this preset, the link will also be in the description along with the video to further explain this effect if you wanna go into bigger detail. But with that said, guys, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one.